welcome everybody to um, this week's uh, Hyde Park uh, emergency management update uh, call. And uh, looks like it says 19. I didn't count 19. But um, so what I'd like to do is uh, I'll call on your name and uh, you can give a report of uh, what's going on in um, your area and um, any any questions or concerns that uh, that you have. Um, so so far I have uh, Ron, Melanie, Kim, Brad, Keith, Roland, Sergeant Wells, uh, Dave and Jen, Paul, Angie, Allie, Roger, Jason, Dan, Keen, Karen, and John. Uh, did I miss anybody? So we're just getting going now. Um, so I will uh, pass it over to Ron to give an update on uh, today's call um, with Vermont Emergency Management. Yeah, thanks, Carol. Uh, yeah, the, the state has been really good about uh, providing various town officials, local officials with updates. They have a call on Wednesday for emergency managers at two o'clock on Friday every week. They've had the local officials, uh, generally select boards and whatnot. And the highlights today include the extension of the stay home order through May 15. Uh, they did open up uh, rentals uh, registrations, letting uh, bed and breakfast hotels start taking reservations for June 15th or later. So that's some progress there. The grant process for municipalities is ongoing. That's something Allie and I will be getting into for the municipal. We don't have a huge bunch of eligible costs so far in Hyde Park. So as far as the state goes, they, they are making um, adjustments pretty much every, it seems like every three or four days, there's another addendum they call them to the order for stay home stay healthy stay safe so oh it's kind of hard to keep up with that but for us in hyde park uh, we're trying to figure out how to do our essential services and, and keep the employees safe as well as provide some basic services to the general public um, the best one of the best resources is the uh, vermont emergency management website if anybody's interested in that they keep things really current there if you want to read all the details of these orders, they're posted there. And that's vem.vermont.gov. Uh, one newer thing that happened this week is enforcement level's been kicked up a little bit. Uh, on that website I just mentioned, there's actually a reporting form now. So if you see things that are concerning to you, you can actually uh, report the event and they'll, uh, it's not a real time type thing. It does go into some kind of email system so they can look at it when they have time, but that's where you have uh, businesses that are operating that maybe shouldn't be, or people congregating in groups of 10 or more those kind of things. So there is, there is an enforcement piece that's kicking up a little bit more than the last couple of weeks. And I think that's about it. So again, this it's so fluid that really the best thing to do is to go to some of these state websites uh, for the for the most current, especially if you're interested in monitoring uh, business activities, business loans, um, employment issues, all those things that come on. Um, today, we reached out to a few local businesses. So glad that uh, you guys were able to jump in and we'll get to you. I'll let um, Carol, take it from here to sort of go around the circle, if you will. If you can take a couple seconds, just introduce yourself, uh, the agency that you're with, and challenges. We we have had uh, some specific needs discussed in prior meetings, which is good. So if you have a specific need that you're not sure how to get information on or who to reach out to, mention that to this group and probably can get an answer for you. Okay, thanks, Ron. Um, Brad? I was on the conference call today. Um, we're at 600 and something cases in Vermont now, and we're still sticking at 19 cases here in Lamoille County. Um, I re I'm representing the High Park Emergency Management Director and also Northern EMS. Um, the ambulance service, we're looking pretty good on um, PPE for the crews. 
Um, we just got another shipment in today. Um, and the fire department and the fire squad are sitting pretty good on PPE. And after the last meeting there, I did get the uh, adapters ordered. So they should be here around the 1st of May for the mask. That's about all I have. Okay, thanks, Brad. Kim? We are continuing um, taking turns going into the office um, so that there's only one person at a time in the office. Uh, our lister is coming in on Wednesdays from 12 to 4, so whoever works Wednesday is getting in there pretty early so we can get out of there on time. Uh, whoever goes in is cleaning up, you know, wiping everything down before they leave so that it's all disinfected, sanitized before the next person comes in. Um, I did find some, um, a small box of um, face masks and gloves, and so I have those at the office if we need them. Um, we're continuing with, you know, offering whatever we can to help people remotely since the building is closed, and that's going well. We haven't had any complaints since the board closed the building, which is good. Okay, thanks, Kim. Um, Allie? Everything is still the same for me. I'm still working at home. Um, other than that, everything is still pretty much the same. Okay, thanks, Allie. Um, Carol, can you remind uh, people to give their title or agency they work with? Yes, yes. If, if everyone can give their title or the agency that they're working with, uh, in addition to their name, just so that uh, we, we have a record of who it is that's that's uh, speaking. Sergeant Wells. Yes, this is uh, Sergeant Wells with uh, the Sheriff's Department. Um, we are still, you know, running as normal as possible. Um, we have reduced some of the calls that we may not uh, go in person to um, where we can handle over the phone. Um, but other than that, we are here um, for any resource. If somebody needs to call in with any questions, uh, we'll try to help out as much as possible. Um, and that's about it. Okay, thanks. Uh, Susan. Um, nope, we're just, we're, we're plugging along. I don't, we're trying to figure out what towns are doing in terms of their road crews and what's gonna be acceptable and what, what isn't. Um, it's like everybody, we're trying to figure out what's, what's safe and what isn't the the big thing for anybody working for the town if they aren't comfortable doing something it is totally at their discretion the, they've been out doing a few projects this week um i talked to them and said well why doesn't everybody stay home next week we're trying to follow the state's lead and sometimes that's a little confusing sort of like we're extending we're extending being you know staying home until May 15th, but simultaneously, actually, it makes sense to me working on on uh, what are what are some of the what are some of the kinds of jobs that can go back. Um, and it's interesting. I think of with the town, one of that every town in the state has to do is you have to put up next winter sand. That's a perfect job for road crews because they're all in their own trucks. Nobody goes near each other, and it takes about two weeks' time. So it's sort of trying to see with the state if that's the sort of thing that is that um, uh, is that acceptable to to them is you know we don't <laughs> we don't we don't want to get any trouble in in any trouble but again it's like all, everybody here just sort of trying to figure out the guidelines and and we ask thank you business people for joining us because uh, part of this is we get through the crisis point, but then as we begin to roll forward and get businesses open and moving again, there's what can the what can the state and the federal government are going to do, but locally, what can we do too to help our local businesses? Okay, thank you, Susan. Let's see, Roger. I talked about uh, coordinating the water for the district up here in North High Park. I haven't yet. I just received the parts that I need. It was a question today with uh, Governor Scott conference that someone called in wanted to know why this had to be done if the water was testing okay. Well, apparently the Governor Scott had no idea about it. And so somebody was gonna be checking in to make sure if that's a good idea or not. So I'll follow up on that. And 
that's about where I am on that, and then I'm just listening to the rest of the stuff that's going on. Okay, thanks, Roger. Um, yeah, I I heard that as well in the uh, governor's uh, address today, and uh, and was wondering about that. So thank you for following up with that. Uh, Roland, do you have anything to add? I do not. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, did I miss any town staff? Go ahead, Amy. So oh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, I have been working mostly from home and I live up here in Lowell, so um, that has its own challenges, but um, I attended a meeting on Monday morning, I mean, anyway, earlier this week with the Lamoille Integrated Networking Team. And um, it's a group of people who, representatives from different Lamoille Health and Human Services organizations. And they are really active and really working hard to still meet the needs of um, vulnerable people in our county. And uh, Greg Stefanski from Capstone Community Action and Heather Hobart from Lamoille Restorative Center and Corey from Copley, um, they're working together to put together an incident command system. So um, that's something that's happening with them. And I also had a meeting this week with the state librarian and the president elect of the Vermont Library Association, because in a couple months, I will no longer be the president of the Vermont Library Association. And um, we are actually working to, we just wrote a letter to ask the American Library Association and the Institute for Museum and Library Services to put together some guidelines about how to make sure that our materials stay safe so that, um, when we start opening again, what that might look like in different waves a little bit at a time, how to keep our materials uh, safe and cleaned and quarantined. And every there are three major articles that are out there, but they're not all giving the same information. So until we can have that baby step in place, I personally can't foresee us um, circulating any materials to start with. Um, so that's what I've been working on this week. Okay, thank you, Amy. Um, Keith, do you have anything uh, for us this week? Well, I, I had a question following our uh, meeting. Oh, when was it? Uh, Wednesday. Um, well, we're talking about the volunteers that are making face masks. And um, I saw there was an email in regard to um, the costs that were associated with that. Um, I had an idea rather than uh, maybe go to the town coffers, um, if it would be possible or uh, if get people's thoughts, if we um, area businesses, I, I would think, uh, might be willing to sponsor so many masks. Um, we can get a, uh, uh, if we could get like a digital logo from them, uh, we could print out some things that could be affixed to the different masks, um, you know, that they, so the businesses would essentially be getting some advertising, you know, we're, as a local business, we, we support uh, uh, the folks in our community. So it would be good PR for the area businesses and also uh, covering the costs of uh, making of our volunteers uh, making these masks. Uh, what I wondered is, is there a uniform uh, design that people are making or a pattern they're following and what the uh, costs might be associated with that? Um, Ron, do you want to uh, address the finances? Yeah, I think the, um, the the cost of in the program. I know Karen's online of the volunteer efforts and the costs and coordinating with businesses. I'm, I I think the scope of that we're still trying to figure out. And you know, it's I think we had one one request for a hundred as is one of the things I remember. The actual cost and whether the materials are already donated and all that business. So maybe Karen could give us an update on that. Pro project you've been working on? Sure, I'm going to let Angie. I'm going to let Angie um, update you on that. Hi, this is Angie from the Hyde Park Helpers, and we um, are into I guess phase two of our helping because the first phase was 
shopping and delivering groceries and food um, alongside the sheriff's department, which has been going great. And then we just started talking about possibly coordinating those face masks. And we're not the only people in the state of Vermont that are doing it. Um, there's quite a few groups out there and everybody does it differently. So I don't necessarily have the answer on if we can ask businesses for sponsors, um, if we can just ask the mask makers to donate their time and money and efforts, if we um, get a grant from United Way and then buy all the material and then disseminate the material to the mask makers. I mean, there there's a million ways to do it. So I don't necessarily have the answers. Um, I just know it can be done. Hey, this is this is Susan. Um, I forgot I didn't introduce myself, Ron. This is Susan Bartlett, the chair of the Select Board. Uh, I I think, and people I've talked to, I think getting certainly getting the cloth material, getting cotton to make masks, is not an issue. There are people that have lots of it, will donate it. I don't I don't think anybody needs to go out and spend any money on on uh, on cotton. Whether elastic or the kind of ties are going to be, elastic is uh, apparently already impossible to find. So having a design that that maybe does ties instead or or some different things will be part of it. I would, and I, I appreciate we have business people on the line, but I would say, I think poor businesses in Vermont are taking such a drumming right now that we can figure out how to, we, we have, there's some money in the, in the town budget that's put aside for this sort of thing. But I have said that, that depending and again I, I don't think for the cloth masks they're it but the the more coverage the the face shields that's where we could run into some we could run into some money and uh, I think either the town can cover that or I have volunteered to figure out what we need and and um, and go raise some money privately to take care of that I don't businesses are already I don't, I don't want to ask businesses for anything like money right now. If anything, I hope that we can be in a situation that is they're coming back if if they need some space and time before some of they can pay some of their bills, that we'll be in a position to be able to help them. This is Angie again, and um, I I would agree with that, Susan. I think the the best we can do is help our businesses by just supplying them with some stuff right now. And um, we do know that we have talked to a few local businesses and price shoppers. Corporate is providing them with masks, so they weren't in the need for them. But Hannaford doesn't have any coming anytime soon, so they were thinking um, a good number of masks could be used by them. And then I watched the school bus drop off food in the morning for, for my boys, and we would love to get them some masks as well. So the school could use, you know, between 25 and and uh, 30 of those. So there are needs. We just have to develop the system of how we get them made, we get them, and then we deliver them. Yep. I, I tend to uh, agree as well. And uh, regarding the design, I think if we uh, kept it simple um, with a, uh, a simple design, um, We've been doing uh, one that uh, a couple of hospitals have have uh, come up with, and uh, the twill tape that um, Anne's been using um, has worked really well uh, as a uh, as a tie. Um, I just wouldn't want to get into too many different um, designs, but um, but certainly wouldn't want to turn back um, any any uh, any offers of masks as well. Um, Melanie, do you have anything to add as well, or? Um, I think that Karen had we had we've been all shopping a lot this week and coordinating our volunteers and getting good meals to lots of people. So Karen created a report since she's got been kind of doing the first in first level of intake. And I don't know if Karen's still on the call. It's been a really great week, really busy week. Yeah, I'm I'm right here. Um, we've done 20 shopping trips now. Um, some are starting to be repeat residents, um, and we have had, um, we're really grateful to the sheriff's department for the deputies that are doing the deliveries. We don't really necessarily know who they are, um, but we just hear good things about them. Um, Sharon Menard and Kara Gates have been fielding the emails 
along with Eric Dodge, and um, they've been super accommodating. Um, we've done 13 deliveries for the from the Charlemont to the community house, but we just got word that the community house um, residents are moving to the sunset right now, actually. And so the deliveries of meals from the Charlemont to the community house is no longer a need. Um, to be honest, that won't help us with a, a lot of um, extra volunteers um, because most the people that were doing that job were a little bit more um, vulnerable and aren't necessarily people that would would want to be we want them out shopping or should be out shopping so we have had we had a really good response initially to all the um, people who wanted um, to help but as this type of thing has probably happens everywhere people are dropping out due to different reasons um, family circumstances and whatnot and I think this week we may end up having to do another push for getting some um, some more shoppers because it's not only are we getting um, more people, um, I like it just seems, especially with Sterling View, which has been wonderful to work with, um, uh, there a lot more of them are starting to use the service. So I think we're going to have to do a little push for for some more volunteers. So that is my little report for you all. Well, thank you, Karen, for the uh, update. That sounds sounds good. And hopefully um, more people are going to volunteer for that. Let's see who's next. Uh, Dave and Jen. Hello, folks. We're from Forest Hill Residential Care Home. We our first visit to this call, so we appreciate the invites. Um, We've got uh, 19 elder residents we care for and 16 staff members that are extremely dedicated to being there and, and taking care of themselves as well so they can be there. So uh, we've been uh, good so far, um, nothing in the building and um, the staff are, are all, for the most part, pretty healthy at this point as well. So. There's been a, a, was some discussion about masks. Um, we had a call and a delivery of a supply of homemade masks from uh, Sandy Albright and Connie Edwards. And uh, the masks they made have been very efficient for us. Uh, we don't. We we have a limited supply of the N95s, which we want to maintain in case we do get a uh, COVID case in the building. Um, we've, we've had very good support from the state. So if we have a case, I know the state will be there as well to help us out. But um, Sandy and Connie both indicated um, at any time if we needed more, they're more than happy to make more. And um, quality was was very good for our purposes. So I put that information out there if uh, anybody was interested in contacting them about making more masks um, it sounded like they had uh, they were more than happy to do so great thank you Dave uh, it's good to hear that uh, things are going well there Paul okay thank you Paul Leslie here for Sterling View um, so right now I'm talking about masks so we found out how many sowers we had in the in the park. Uh, <laughs> one that that started delivering them, uh, left them in the mail room uh, with a sign, just just take one, and and that didn't work because people were taking two or three, and and uh, they went quickly. So uh, next thing you know, we had a half a dozen more ladies uh, chime right in before the was over, and masks started appearing from. Anyway, and so our health and wellness group within two days were distributing masks to every resident here in the park. Uh, and then uh, it's my understanding that some of our people that were making masks were intending to um, contact uh, other other sources so that they could give them to. So that that was a pleasure to work with those ladies. Uh, typical of what goes on here at the park. Um, we're still monitoring our 
people that are here on a full quarantine that have uh, traveled in from out of state um, or out from out of the country, they should be off quarantine uh, tomorrow. Uh, that are, then a new list will start later um, as they arrive uh, or able to arrive. Um, and then uh, the next uh, part of our uh, concerns, aside from the uh, uh, continuance of our uh, you know, hold your distance in place, wash your hands, and put on your mask, uh, it looks like it's going to last uh, from Scott's edict uh, yesterday mandate uh, for another another month and five days until the 15th of May. So we're prepared for that and uh, we've had uh, excellent uh, sources of help for us and in particular with the High Park uh, Helpers Group, uh, Karen and Melanie and Angie are with and so that's been very helpful for us um, in coordination with the Sheriff's Department. Um, I also want to put a plug in here for Lamoille Home Health and Hospice because they're paramount to the wellness of our people here that are in need of uh, that type of care. Um, some more than others, of course, uh, two, three times a week, they're appearing for individuals here uh, to help out one one nurse or another or a hospice. Um, it's It's quite a quite a thing to watch them. It's like a choreographed dance. I mean, they're here and the next one shows up and uh, it, uh, they're off to the next house. You just look around, and you can see what's going on. It, uh, it's quite a thing. They're putting their, their own lives at risk. Uh, but I've noticed that uh, everyone that's coming, you know, in the last uh, eight, 10 days has been masking up. Uh, I'm very encouraged uh, by that to see that everybody's going with the flow to help us, uh, each of us, you know, to uh, to stay clean and, and healthy and well. Um, so that's it from a from the cor Corona perspective here. Um, however, we're we're quite concerned in the park with the recycle household trash. Uh, you know, we're kind of monitoring the uh, Thursday's uh, hearing on it uh, with the Department of Resource Natural Resources. I think had something to say about it, and also with the food waste law that was to be effective July 1st, I believe has been um, moved forward to January of, uh, of 21. But uh, so that that was of concern here for us at this time. Um, it was wasn't going to be good. It wouldn't be good either for the for the trash. We just need to know exactly what's happening. The current hauler is planning on picking it up this month, but that could change tomorrow. Um, and there's no real uh, good solid market for it. So sometimes it ends up in the dump anyway. Um, but aside from that, we're quite we're quite pleased with the efforts that the town of High Park is making uh, to this particular uh, um, update on a weekly basis to get together and find out what what each of us are doing and um, we're not left in the dark. And I also appreciate what Governor Scott is doing for us as well with his um, almost daily updates these days. So um, most encouraging um, to see that uh, we're trying to work through this together. So that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Paul, for the update. Um, Jason. Great. Thanks for inviting me to join today. Um, I really just wanted to come on to kind of hear about what's going on in the community. Um, I don't have anything specific to request or anything like that, but, um, you know, an update on 10 Ben's beer. Um, we're considered an essential business by the state, which has been a bit of a blessing for us. Um, our tap room is closed, you know, um, since bars and restaurants were order to be closed and it'll probably remain closed for quite a while i would assume um but we are manufacturing minimally uh with essential employees only um i've been this, this is my first time here this week so i've been working from home as much as possible uh, my partner mike has kind of been doing the same thing um and we're um still selling beer uh, for pickup at the brewery location. Um, we've put some measures in place where no transactions have to occur 
on site. Everything's done on the internet. Um, the pickup window is set up in a way that there's about eight to 10 feet of distance between our staff and anyone that comes to pick up product. Um, and that's been kind of a saving grace as far as doing business out of here. Um, and we plan to continue that for as long as we can. Um, you know, I think our concerns lie in just keeping everybody safe and um, locating some supplies like hand sanitizer has been tough to come by. Um, we're just about out of rubber gloves. We're not quite as concerned about that because we want to make sure they go to healthcare workers before they come to us. But um, that's something we always have had in stock without any problem. And now it's impossible to find. Uh, so there's a few things like that that, you know, we're, we're still trying to work through, but um, overall um, we are probably doing better than a lot of businesses and we feel pretty grateful for that. Um, I'll just add one last thing that um, we're starting a, um, a live tasting room event on Instagram every Friday to try to engage our followers a little bit. Um, one of the pieces of that is asking for donations to help with causes uh, related to COVID. Um, if there's anything in the direct local community of Hyde Park that would be, um, would benefit from those kind of donations, we could certainly consider contributing. Um, you know, we're just kind of, kind of solicit donations from our followers and then pass them along to charities. So um, that starts tonight at seven. That'll be for four weeks. Uh, we're going to be patching in local musicians who obviously are out of work. Um, they're all doing it on a volunteer basis uh, just to kind of help generate some interest and, and help, you know, maybe generate more donations. So, you know, that's what we're trying to do to give back. And, you know, we appreciate people still supporting us. So, we're, we're going to try to do that and see how it goes. And if anyone has ideas, email me, Jason at 10 And uh, again, thanks for including us. Um, I might have to drop here soon, but I appreciate everybody's input. Well, thank you for the update, uh, Jason, and, uh, and the information. And uh, it, it actually made me think, uh, the PowerPoint that I have running in the background, um, I have restaurants listed, but uh, perhaps a slide with uh, other businesses um, that are still selling and uh, and working under these conditions um, might be appropriate. Um, so I'll, I will uh, look into that for, for next week's meeting. Dan. Okay, you got it. Uh, Dan Keen here from Lamoille Valley Chevrolet. And again, likewise, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on the call uh, today with everybody here. Um, you know, we're uh, we're doing everything we can, as you can imagine. It's been difficult, uh, but we uh, we have 30 full and part-time employees at the at the dealership, and we still have 29 that are employed. Uh, we have one that requested to be on unemployment, so we did that, uh, and we have about three or four people that are able to work from home. So. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, has been worked out well. Uh, we expanded our hours of our service department. I'm sure I'm telling you guys, you're probably hearing my ads in the background, but we uh, expanded our hours in our service department and we went to uh, longer days uh, and four 10-hour uh, days for all of our technicians. Uh, and this allowed them to, uh, you know, we're spreading out our work. Uh, and it's allowed us to, you know, keep up with demand. We are an essential business in in regards to service in particular, and uh, we've been extremely busy there. And largely, uh, we're getting a lot of people coming to us from further out than normal because of most of the dealerships, even though uh, service was considered essential, just shut their doors. Um, you know, I would say probably 70 to 75 percent of the dealers dealerships in the state right now are, are not doing any service business. So, you know, we are getting uh, some people that need that service, you know, coming to Hyde Park uh, in our other dealerships. Um, you know, as far as what we're doing at the dealerships, I, you probably heard, but we're doing curbside write-up 
even though a customer is allowed in our building for service because it's essential, we, we elected to close off our entire building to anybody about two weeks ago, other than the employees. So uh, even if the sheriff showed up, we might not let him in. Um, and, the, and the folks at the dealership have been doing a great job, uh, you know, wearing their masks and wearing gloves and social distancing. Uh, we're selling cars, although not as many, but on, as online and over the phone and delivery would be by appointment. Uh, we're just following the governor's uh, guidelines for, for operating. Um, you know, beyond that, uh, one of the things we're trying to do to, to uh, you know, say thank you to, you know, all the uh, first responders and healthcare professionals, our dealerships are maintaining their vehicles right now at no charge. So they need oil changes, tire rotations, state inspections, whatever, anything we can do to help them. And certainly if they have an issue, we're going to bring their vehicle to the front burner because we want to make sure that they can get to work and do what they're doing for all of us. Uh, that's probably about it. I, I will say, I don't, you know, I don't, don't know how many other business people there are on this line. Uh, but, uh, we were ready last week and applied for all of our PPP payment protection loans and union bank was absolutely fantastic. We had our approvals between Friday and Saturday and our loan should be set up here this week. So I would just, you know, advise if anybody reaches out to the town or if you know of anybody, uh, my first inclination was possibly to go with a bigger bank thinking they might be able to help us, but it turned out, uh, you know, uh, one of the bigger banks advised me to go local, which we did, and Union was amazing, and I've heard nothing but great things. So, uh, you know, these loans are going to be what's going to, what's allowing me to keep my people employed, because if it wasn't for that, we're going to lose a lot of money here for the next, you know, foreseeable 30 to 60 days, but uh, but we're doing everything we can to keep our people working. And my belief is that when we get to the other side of this, uh, then, you know, we'll be in a better position because we kept them working. Uh, some, one of the other callers mentioned, you know, that uh, they gave their employees the option of working or not. And we gave, we told every single employee at all of our dealerships, if you're not comfortable or if you have an issue uh, or, or, you know, if there's an underlying health issue that, you know, you didn't have to be here. And, you know, we had probably throughout five dealerships, maybe five or six people that, that came to us. And, and, you know, so, you know, we honored their, you know, feelings and their concerns, but for the most part, I think people do want to work through this if they can. Um, and the only last thing of Jason still on this call, thank God for rotary chaos. Cause it's getting me through my, uh, that one beer is getting me through my nights. <laughs> that's good to hear, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> all okay. right that's it okay great thank you dan uh, john uh all right so uh, i too appreciate that you guys uh invited us into this call um jenna and i are home we would love to be there helping feeding the community um but being at home with our newborn is um our priority right now um i do want to reach out as i've reached out to a few of our neighbors and let them know uh, with you guys as well i still have my connection with my food suppliers so if there is anything that we need i am more than happy to reach out and see if we can get that through them um, such as toilet paper and uh, gloves and things of that nature and food if anybody needs food bread eggs all that fun stuff um, we're going to try to open as soon as we can as soon as we feel comfortable with having the newborn we're going to try to open. We might extend the hours or change the hours just while all this is going on. Um, that's about it. We're, we're fortunate to be in such a strong community as Hyde Park, and uh, there is no doubt that we will reopen. We are not going anywhere, and uh, we're going to be back and ready to go. So, again, thank you, everybody, for having us on. And uh, if I can piggyback off of Dan, I think the Northern Heights, Jason, is what's kept me going. So, Thanks for that keg. We didn't sell any of it. I've drank most of it. <laughs> Good to hear, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. And uh, I'm sure um, once you're able to open back up, we'll all be back down there again. Um, I do. I do. I do really want to stress, though, that if anybody needs anything um, food wise for anybody, grocery shopping or anything like that, we could do it through our uh, food suppliers and we'll get it at, obviously at their cost so 
um, please reach out to us at forkinggavelvt at gmail.com anytime. Thanks. Thank you, John. Um, let's see. Is there anyone that I missed? I see a caller 11 there. Oh, well, Valerie Valcor from the health department is here. I've been listening in. I don't really have much else to say. I'm very, very impressed and I'm very grateful to live in Lamoille County. Um, I think the only thing that I'm doing, especially I've been redeployed uh, from my local office to the health operations center and my, um, my role there is in the, um, the, the medical volunteer branch. Um, because part of my work on a regular basis is with the Medical Reserve Corps. And um, so we are, I'm on a team and we're working with the State uh, health, um, Emergency Operations Center and the Health Operations Center to coordinate efforts around volunteer. Um, and like I said, specifically my role is around medical volunteers. Um, we're working on, working on a process to streamline those requests um, while we have not seen our surge yet, um, and hopefully we don't, but we are preparing to for that that process. So, if our hospitals and our uh, long-term care facilities and um, other uh, facilities, uh, medical surge sites, um, needing to staff up and needing more staff, um, that's the work, the work that I'm doing right now. Um, so, uh, hopefully this information will get out to the people it needs to get out to. I'm not sure how much the municipalities will get, but I'll um, certainly what I think is appropriate, for example, like Serve Vermont, um, those nonprofit volunteers um, that's being channeled through the system I just mentioned, um, I think that type of volunteer information needs to get to the municipality. So uh, that's one thing I'll advocate for. Okay, thank you, Val, for the update. Um, is there anybody else that I missed? Okay, um, I'll just add that uh, while we were going through uh, listening to everybody that uh, Vermont Emergency Management uh, just published uh, the figures for today, and the total cases is now 679, with 32 currently hospitalized. Uh, 43 hospitalized under investigation. Um, we did have an additional death, so the number is uh, 24. Uh, the total tests are 8,657, and 44 people are being monitored, and 781 have completed monitoring. So uh, if nobody has anything else, uh, are there any questions um, before we, we close today's call? I just had one question for anybody that wants to chime in. This is Ron again. Just uh, uh, overall, these meetings are meant to be information sharing. Let it, you know, let everybody know that we're out here, we're listening, and uh, the town as well as all the individual businesses and groups are here to support each other. So, if anybody has any um, specific needs, uh, just like John was mentioning uh, with his uh, food contacts. Um, please do take advantage of that, connect with people. You know, you don't need to go through this service. You can do it directly. If you do have issues and you have a high need, uh, please just you know let people know they can call Susan, call emergency management director, uh, Brad or Carol or anybody here if you're, if you're not finding those uh, things elsewhere. Okay, Any, anyone else? Carol, I'll just throw out to the ladies that are working on masks. Um, I have my hands on eight masks I'm willing to donate um, that I have extra from the ambulance. Oh, uh, wonderful, Brad. Um, uh, Angie or um, Karen or Melissa, um, do you want to uh, to pick those up? I, I kind of heard that. Sorry, Carol, it, it kind of broke up a little bit. But um, Brad, we'd gladly um, arrange to get those from you. Okay, I will shoot you guys an email later there, and we'll uh, 
set up something so we can get them out to people that need them. Great, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. And um, perhaps when we close this, uh, if you want to um, stay on the line and maybe uh, with Hyde Park helpers and uh, and we could talk a little bit more about uh, uh, the masks. Fine with me. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for um, joining us today for the call. And um, we'll be sending out a notice um, the night before, um, unlike today, uh, for um, the meeting again. And uh, we'll be doing this every week during um, this whole uh, event. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Easter. Yep, Happy. thank you, everybody. Happy Easter. Um, so, um, I'm not sure who wants to address it, so I'll just say to the Hyde Park helpers, um, Ann here currently has about uh, 50 masks, um, and, um, and she's still working, working on more. Um, do we want to start um, getting them out to folks? I think that would be, is Melanie, <clears throat> Angie's organizing all that piece, but I think it sounds like a great, you know, first step. And I know Hannaford's, when I spoke with them, was really open to having some donated to their store for their employees. It, uh, am I correct in that we, they didn't know how many? That's right. They just were, they were, they weren't getting any from their um, organizations. They said anything that we could offer them would be welcome and then I asked for a number and she said well we're just we you know whatever you can do is great so there was really no guidance on that but if you, know, you, you said you have okay, to yes yeah, go ahead Sue. it's Kim Moulton oh Kim. Um, so I I see it on the call sorry um I have some fabric that I'd be willing to donate and along the lines of the masks going to Hannaford's um, it's my understanding that with the cloth masks that it's they're recommended that they're only used for like two hours at a time and then you know set aside and washed later and a, a clean one going on so if a cashier or whoever has a six hour shift or an eight hour shift you know they're wearing four masks during their shift so that's also something to think about um and that was a i think i read it on a, one of the hospitals sites or the CDC site or something. Um, but also I wanted you to know if you or Ann or anybody else who needs fabric, I've got some fabric that I'd be, and it's good quality quilting fabric because I quilt, um, I'd be willing to donate fabric to anybody who wants it. Well, thank you. Um, I hadn't seen that about the, uh, the two hours. Uh, it certainly makes sense. Um, it may be difficult for us to supply that many masks. I, I know. People. I know. I mean, we'll we certainly do the the best the best we can. Um, and at this point, just looking over at our dining room table, has uh, quite a bit of fabric still. So if there's others that um, that could use fabric, um, I'm sure they they would uh, be happy to have it. Another thing, um, I did make a couple of masks for my daughter, and one I used the hair bands like people are using, and that was just too tight for her. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but they were using, recommended using t-shirt material because it's nice and soft. And if you take a t-shirt and just lay it nice and flat on your cutting board and cut it in one inch strips and then pull it taut once it's cut, it kind of curls the edges. and you use them as a tied mask rather than behind the ears and it worked so tremendously well that she took this extra mask with her to work today so that was another in lieu of elastic when people run out there's 
that t-shirt option that's out there too for the ear pieces or the ties. No, that's that's nice to know. Um, the the elastics I think are for the most part. Uh, um, I think they may be uncomfortable for people to wear around their ears for a long period of time and maybe a little bit more prone um, for people to to touch them because of that. Uh, I think the t-shirts right. are a good idea. Um, the uh, twill tape that Anne has been using, but that's something she, she purchased, um, is a good idea as well. Um, I also, if anyone is interested, um, have a, a, an article from NIOSH uh, regarding uh, uh, emergency use of uh, uh, respiratory masks, and they have one that's made entirely out of uh, t-shirt material with the, all the uh, the scientific background um, behind it. Um, so, yeah. moving forward, I, I can certainly mail that out um, to folks. Um, but um, moving forward. Um, how, how many other volunteers um, do you have right now? Uh, this is to the Hyde Park helpers uh, for um, making masks. So this is the stage we're on. I haven't released that information yet because I wanted to make sure that the the forms that we created looked uh, acceptable to you guys. As to that was our goal and that's what our, our focus was for. So I have two Google forms that are ready to go public and i'm ready to go public with our website too so as soon as that happens then that will take us on the social media blast with front porch forum facebook websites um and then i also wrote an article to the news and citizen um and hopeful that they'll pick up this story so that we can get them to emphasize the need for um, community masks does that sound like the appropriate path uh that sounds sounds reasonable to me ron your thoughts yeah i think that was a good step to you know sort of like that advertising rule of you got to hit somebody in the face three times before they take action <laughs> so uh, you probably will see some action but then you'll have to sort of keep that up so the the keeping it up part once you have those established for people to sign up and to you know request need is to possibly consider doing that postcard we talked about as well as uh, and you don't need to do too much but sort of regular front porch forum posting going forward so that you know the the whole bunch of people you miss on your first effort is just a you know a constant message consistent message on a regular basis going forward so the in intermediate step i'm thinking about is to let you do that uh with the newspaper and get it out on social media and then follow it up pretty shortly after that, whether it's just a few days or a week with a with, with a mailing. And I can talk about the format of that and how to, how to get it done with Susan. Um, and then going forward to have, I don't know, a, a Friday reminder or Saturday reminder on Front Porch Forum to you know keep it on on the top of people's minds as we go forward. Um. Now, a question regarding the forms. I'm looking at them here. If you're using one currently for um, volunteers, is that correct? Yeah, one for the shopping volunteers. Okay. H have you had uh, any, I, I'm assuming that form when somebody fills it out gets uh, sent via email to, um, to some or all of you. Have you had any issues with uh, with uh, spam filling out of those forms? No, we haven't had anything irregular. Okay, good. That's the, the IT side of me uh, thinking about the form. <laughs> always always looking for the, the evil in the IT. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> great. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the form looks, looks fine to me. Um, I think it'd probably be, um, best to get um, people uh, sewing the masks and, and start getting a good production going uh, before we start handing out too many, uh, particularly with the uh, some larger orders like, like Hannaford's as opposed to some of the smaller businesses. Um, 
Does that sound? Well, Carol, what you had mentioned about the simplicity of things, I guess, is what it really was. And I know that the information that was sent out on three, I think it's three different designs. CDC has their own design. Everybody has their own design. Are we, are we offering, uh, as requests come in, would you be offering three different things or how, what's the actual product that, that the helpers are preparing or is they just going to, you know, people ask for large, ask for small, that kind of stuff? I mean, it, it's my personal opinion that sticking with a, a standard uh, design would be uh, the best, but I also don't think that we should be turning down uh, masks that that others have made according to other designs. Yeah, I would think it would be particular to the sewer. Like if they're if they're comfortable with making those t-shirt designs, that's what they're doing. If they're comfortable with the elastic work and they have it, that's what they're doing. Um, I think that would be hard to turn them down, like Carol said. But one, <laughs> I know like Karen got a mask today and it doesn't fit her. So there is always that. So people do have to be conscious yeah. and aware that there are adults, there are women, there are teenagers, and there are children. And those are definitely different sizes. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking as far as what, what you had put out in your email, you know, the three different designs is that just three different designs and they'll all come in different sizes and somebody has to sort of sort them because people say I need five small ones and eight, you know, extra large, that kind of order. I don't know that we can get that specific as to just kind of deliver general needs. I know you can, uh, like, you can adapt a mask. So I took a mask and I ran out of tin foil yesterday. And if you take the metal cutting edge off of the cardboard, you can actually sew that into a top of a mask and then it bends around your nose better. So we're kind of opening up people to be their own safety net as well. Yeah, we can provide them with the general design, but then it's really up to them how they wear it, how they use it, how they wash it. Like Kim said before, a mask is only good for a couple of hours because once it retains moisture, it's no good anymore. Okay. Yeah. Pipe cleaners also work well for the uh, for a um, adjustable nose uh, nose oh, yeah. piece. Another thing, um, Dartmouth, there they when they have put out their thing for masks, the, what they're asking their people that when they're donated that, that when you bring them in, um, bring them in in Ziploc bags according to size. Um, they've also somebody else was saying, and I don't remember what hospital this was just take a, a, a like a sharpie marker and somewhere on the side of the mask um, just write a S, M, or L so that after it goes through the wash process you know whoever's wearing it knows that that's the right size for them if they've got a family and they're washing 20 different ones for you know everybody who's their essential workers yep that, that makes that makes sense if um, if they're doing uh, multiple sizes um, so I think it would be good to um to get the get the word out um to get get people to make them and and slowly start to um get donations out to various uh groups. Yeah, this is Susan. I really think Hannaford's is important. I mean, just the number of people that come into contact and they come into contact with. I mean, that's a that's such a high volume group of people that I think the sooner the sooner we can get as many masks as possible to them because I don't know how many people work there, but it's probably a pretty good number. Yeah, I, I think Han Hannaford should be a, a priority as well as uh, their their pharmacy inside as well. Um, uh, I think a lot of the other places, um, I haven't been to Obishan, um, whether they're bringing them out, uh, things outside for people, but we still need to, uh, protect the, the people that are working inside. Uh, they have masks. They, they do have masks? Yeah, yeah, they have masks. I was there yesterday. They have masks. Oh, okay. Make makes sense since they normally uh, sold them in the past that they saved some for themselves. 
okay um so do we want to uh, get that the form out there and and get going with this yeah, I think I think get the forms out there and I and I think Ron was saying it's three unfortunately Ron it's seven times before you get people to pay attention but um <laughs> and it also which would not surprise me at all but I think is as demand builds, we will find up at Sterling View that we have a bunch of folks that are that are happy to make masks and be able to contribute in some way. Yes, I, I think Paul was mentioning that there were a lot of people there with sewing machines ready to go. So uh, maybe we'll, we'll get some there and keeps people busy. That uh, sound like a, a plan? Uh, this is to the the helpers yeah that that sounds like a plan I'm, I'm ready to go with it so we should be talking about it again next week yeah um we could uh um have have another call um perhaps in the middle of the week to to talk just about this as opposed to the the entire um the entire group um, I will, if it's okay, I'll, I'll keep you posted, uh, Carol, uh, via email and what our response has been and what it looks like. And then we can determine our, our meeting needs after that, if that's good. So, sounds good to me. And sounds Carol, good. Melody, you have, you said that Anne has 50 currently ready to go. Is that right? Yes. It's, it's about 50. Yes. Great. Excellent. And are they one size? Yes. They're, they're one size. Um, uh, the rectangular pleated masks with um, with twill tape ties. Great. Yeah, she she was in fashion design and uh, got them to fit pretty well. Nice. <laughs> Super. So okay. I think we'll probably end up making like a Google sheet that just has like quantities as they come in, so we can you can yours can be the first one. <laughs> yep. Sounds good. Great. All right. Well, great. great. Uh, if nobody has anything to add. Um, we will move forward and, and uh, wish everybody a, a good weekend and uh, happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you as well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.